Inspiring Uganda, you're watching UBC TV. Pleasure to have your company. Every single time you choose a national broadcaster, you make us proud. And good to know you're watching this particular episode of Business Today, right here. My name is Sandra Kahunde Agaba. And as always, excited about this whole session. And uh, I'm sure you can tell. But anyways, uh, just to let you know that to, to us here, every story is a business story. And um, our business insight will always bring you in entrepreneurs, economists, the poor have made it, listening to your stories, the personalities for the day, uh, they give us heads up and they encourage you and they inspire us, which works for us. And uh, we talk lots to do with the sector players of the economy and a whole lot more. You can always expect that and much more right here on Business Today. Now, our guest for the day to inspire us. Um, having Catherine Wines. I believe you had a name, it rings a bell to you and when you talk about World Remit and also uh, Remit Hansen's, uh, you get to uh, think about Catherine Wines. Uh, she's going to be a guest for the day and we're going to talk about lots to do with her company Assist Into Central, that is in 2010. And uh, getting to understand uh, remitting the, the online transfer of um, transaction that goes on the transfer of money uh, when we speak about online transactions and uh, we have to understand more of that. Catherine, pleasure to have your company. Thank you very much for asking. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm sorry for my voice. Unfortunately, I've got a bit of a cold, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a bit croaky today. <laughs> mm -hmm. Away from UK, how does it feel to be in the part of Africa, Uganda? Oh, lovely. Yeah, first the sun, mm -hmm. the people, very friendly, and uh, you know, Uganda is, uh, has been a, a long-standing market for us. We started here in 2012, and uh, yesterday I visited uh, our first uh, partner, and that was lovely to, to see him and uh, to see how he had grown his business as well at the same time as, uh, as we had grown ours. So that was lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're the director and co-founder of World Remit. Yes. Um, what inspired you? How did you start up? Uh, how did you get to think of an online transaction? Yeah, I've been uh, in the uh, remittance sector for uh, you know, a number of years, since the early 2000, and obviously in what I call the, the traditional, the offline <coughs> business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, I knew uh, towards the end, uh, before I left the last company I was working for, that, you know, things, we had to do things differently. And when I met uh, Ismail Ahmed, my co-founder, who had the idea of, uh, of bringing you know, this business online, uh, I knew that you know, that was right. And uh, I certainly believe in the idea as well. So, uh, and that was very much our mission, is to, to change the way remittances were done, uh, which had been, I say, very traditional, which had been very costly and still are costly. But uh, to, it was very much our mission to change that, to, to make it easier, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, faster, but also cheaper to use the technology to make it, to to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and Aren't you worried about the existing competition at the moment? Because I believe there was there were bigger banks existing at that particular time. Yes, well, it it was you know the, the, the what we call the traditional players like Western Union MoneyGram, who obviously had been you know in existence for many many years. So in a way, I had a little bit of a you know, kind of a monopoly situation and a bit maybe complacent as well. Like the big banks, you know, it's very difficult when you've, uh, you reach a certain stage to think, you know, about new ideas and uh, be agile. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, on the, the advantage that we had. We started with, from scratch with a blank page mm -hmm. and we could really look and say, how can we make it better? We didn't have any legacy system. We could really use uh, the new technology to, to develop systems which are going to be easier, faster, but also very secure, mm -hmm. and uh, which would meet all the regulators' kind of demands. Mm -hmm. I, I believe uh, there are about a million transactions that uh, uh, carry on each and every single time, maybe throughout the years. Yeah. And uh, you have about uh, uh, this particular uh, technology. Yeah. Uh, the, helps always an advantage for about 140 countries uh, but I believe uh, at the start you had breakdowns maybe a little about them the challenges you encounter yes when you start a business you, you you never know exactly how it's going to happen until you actually do it you know you can plan you can uh, you know think you've you tested everything but you, until you actually do it you find other problems mm -hmm. So, you know, at some time the system was a bit slow and because, you know, we didn't know how many customers we were going to get at any stage. So, but that's the thing that, you know, like any business, especially any digital business, or tech business, had to go through. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then um, maybe uh, 
for the Africans. Uh, you know, I can we cannot deny to say that uh, Africans take long. We're maybe getting a reception form uh, for, from people uh, on how they've received the new technology and the innovations that are coming day by day. Uh, when it, when you speak about Africa, how is the reception? Well, I, I, you know, for me, for us, uh, Africa has always been our, our top, you know, kind of continent, and. Uh, Today, we said that 50% of our volume goes to Africa. Yeah. And what has been really exciting is when we started, you know, on the same side, we were totally digital, 100% digital, didn't take cash. Mm -hmm. But obviously, at the VC end, especially in Africa, when we started, it was the traditional cash collection. Mm -hmm. But what was exciting is we saw the new technology emerging in the form of mobile money. Mm -hmm. And that's changed. You know, I call it a revolution. Mm -hmm. And I think that's changed, you know, the, the face of uh, Africa in terms that suddenly, you know, uh, where 80% of the population had no access to financial services, suddenly they had access to, uh, uh, and it was a simple system because it was on the old phones, able to send money to each other via mobile money. And we thought, well, if people can, uh, you know, use that in their own country, work out with remittances mm -hmm. to mobile money, and that's where we started, you know, contacting all the mobile operators and connecting to mobile operators uh, to, to help, you know, the diaspora be able to send very quickly to their family, instantly, you know, monies to their mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe uh, speaking to a young entrepreneur out there, maybe a young female uh, who wants to be in your own world, because uh, I know I, I, <coughs> I know someone out there, your high inspiration on the other hand when it comes to technology, and maybe if they want to take it upon themselves as a career, what advice would you give them? Well, you know, you, you've got, if you have an idea and, and a dream, you've got to, to pursue it. It might not work, but, you know, until you try it, it, it you've got to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, these days, uh, you, know, I, and I, you know, I visited, for example, the Innovation Village at, uh, in Nintendo in Kampala uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. And it was very exciting to see, you know, all these young people who had ideas and wanted to do things and developing things. What obviously is needed is maybe a support network. You know, sometimes being on your own is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you need to do, I think, if you have an idea, is, is to talk about others, you know, get friends maybe or, or family or, or business, you know, kind of support where they can, you know, help you maybe putting a model together and, and, and say, you know, that is, is this going to work? Does this make sense? Uh, so that's why I said those hubs are, are very useful because that's where you can exchange, talk to other people who will understand and, and, and give you ideas or maybe challenge your idea and that, that's very important. And that's why, you know, that's some, something I've talked over the last two days uh, to, to a number of people including, you know, government representative, the importance of uh, the government to support innovation mm -hmm. through those hubs by giving them help so they can provide a network which will help entrepreneurs to develop mm -hmm. and create, uh, you know, a really valuable business for Uganda. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think uh, such um, a transfer of money or maybe such a technology uh, will help out uh, to a developing country? Well, you know, the remittances, if you look at the statistics, remittances is about $600 billion a year are being sent from the diaspora overseas back to back home. That's amount to let more than three times the development aid. So remittances are critical to, to people. Uh, they, they, they contribute generally a fairly large percentage of GDP. In mm -hmm. Uganda, mm -hmm. it's about 5% of GDP. So very important for people's daily life in terms of simple support, you know, for, uh, food, education, rent, but also school, school fees, health, you know, um, hospital fees and so on. But what we see as well is, you know, it helps people set up business, the diaspora help people, you know, set up maybe micro businesses. We have an example uh, in the UK of this lady uh, who is a nurse in the UK from Kenya and sending and has helping her, uh, her two sons set up an agribusiness in, in Kenya by sending money, you know, regularly. And, uh, and now those two, two, two sons have, have got a nice business with employing people. Mm -hmm. So the diaspora has got a really important role to play in sending remittances back home. Well, can this service like the World Remit um, help an, an, an entrepreneur? Like, uh, can it be an agent, an agent of change among the young entrepreneurs? Yes, I, I think, you know, um, we are digital and therefore you know, there's no doubt, you know, our customer base initially has been very much young people who adopt, you know, new technology. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I think it's, it's kind of an example as well of, uh, you know, we started three of us eight years ago. Mm -hmm. We are now 700 people. Mm -hmm. So it shows that it can be done. Mm -hmm. And if the idea is right, and, and I said, you, you develop that idea, you can make it and, and make, you know, a change for people. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, good to know you're still a part of this episode of Business Today. I'm still here with Catherine Wines, a world remittance, and of course I have a lot to do uh, with uh, getting us to know how the technology works and uh, what really inspired her. I believe at least you're picking one or two things. Uh, at this particular moment, uh, we want to find out, Catherine, are you saying you, 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 have, you had Ahmed from Nigeria? Yeah, uh, Ishmael. No, no, Ishmael, Ishmael Ahmed was from Somaliland. From Somaliland. Yes. I'm seeing a, a, a different breed. Yeah. UK and then Nigeria and then no. Somalia. So Somaliland and uh, yes, who are, so yeah, Ismail is from Somaliland. And, uh, you know, he himself, uh, you know. Any challenge you encounter there because they're having different currencies all together? <clears throat> no, uh, no it's the, that's, uh, that's part of the business. You know, we've been, both of us have been in the business for, uh, you know, a long time. So we know the, the workings of the business. What was changing is the way it was transmitted and obviously trying to persuade people to, to change their views about, uh, you know, doing it, uh, doing it offline, are you going to a shop, to actually using, you know, the website or the app. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a, you know, a, a change because when it comes to financial services, uh, and certainly that's something for people, new entrepreneurs doing, to looking at fintech, you know, financial services, technology, you need to uh, understand that customers are sometimes reluctant to change. You know, it takes them time to change. When it comes to money, mm -hmm. they, they, they feel insecure. And uh, mm -hmm. so you've got to persuade customers, you've got to give them the, you know, uh, make them trust you. So then they, they switch to a new service. You're talking about customers. It yeah. also reminds me more to do with the consumers uh, when it comes to the money transfer technology. Did you also have it in mind changing um, the consumer behavior? Yes, and uh, well, it's so much changing the, the consumer behavior, but it's reacting to their needs. And we found that uh, with uh, a digital way of sending money and mobile money as well, that people change the pattern of sending. So, for example, you know, when it was fairly, you know, inconvenient to send money, you had to go to a shop, draw cash, go to a shop, queue, and send a, fill a form and so on. Mm -hmm. People would send maybe less often, but, you know, uh, a bigger sum, because the costs were high, a bigger sum once, and maybe sending it to the, the head of the family. Mm -hmm. And then, then the head of the family would, you know, kind of uh, distribute it among the other members of the family. Now, with uh, digital, uh, remittances and also with mobile money at the other end, we find that people, you know, tend to send directly to people. So they send lower amounts more often, but directly to people rather than to one person. And what we found is that it's benefited women because often women were waiting for money to be given to them by be the head of the family, mm -hmm. where now they are, with mobile money, they've, be, they've been able to become a much, much more independent and have control of, uh, of their budget and their money. So that has been a really, as far as, as a woman, I think that's been a, a really positive impact mm -hmm. uh, of uh, uh, both, you know, mobile money, financial inclusion, but also, you know, gender kind of gap. Um, but also what we found, for example, in Uganda, is a lot of our remittance to mobile money actually in the rural areas. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, generally in a rural area, if you have to travel a long, ta a long way to collect money, mm -hmm. it also costs, you probably have to take a bus or something to, to go and collect the money. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you can receive it on your mobile, it's, you know, instant, safer, because you don't have to carry cash on you. Mm -hmm. And we find that, you know, now, uh, you know, diaspora who have family in a rural area like to send to mobile money because they know it's instant, safer, and obviously much more convenient for their family. Mm -hmm. You talked about women there. It yeah. <laughs> also took my attention. Yeah. And uh, recently, uh, this whole week, is, oh, we've been uh, talking more and uh, celebrating financial inclusion. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, what would your take be, especially for the women out there? Is it a benefit to you or...? Yeah, I think, as I said, um, you know, as, as you know, uh, it is Financial Inclusion Week in Uganda. And, and in fact, I was at, uh, at a conference yesterday set up by uh, FSD Uganda to talk about financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, to me, uh, certainly mobile money has really contributed to improve financial inclusion. Um, if we look at, you know, the stats, you know, three years ago, there was 2.5 billion unbanked in the world. In uh, last year, the, the last report, which was produced recently, that has reduced by 45% to 1.7 billion, you know, Canva person. Well, most of it is due because mobile money, that, that decrease is, has been, can be attributed to mobile money. Because people have, as a, you know, a lot of people have got a mobile, they don't have a bank account, but they have a mobile, and therefore they've been able to open a, a, a mobile account. And as I said, you know, we may never have taken advantage of that. There's still a, a gender gap, unfortunately, you know, still uh, in terms of mobile money account. You know, more men have mobile money account than women, but uh, there's certainly things to be done. Maybe there's still, you know, cultural issues. Literacy is a, it can be a problem, especially in the rural areas. So there's still work to be done, but there's definitely has a, has a major contribution, positive contribution. Well, okay, now getting to the other bit, I mean, in the 21st century, so many things have come into play, uh, lots of technologies being introduced, and now we cannot afford to talk about cryptocurrency itself. Yeah. That is also taking uh, yeah. the word of the day. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, crypto is, uh, <clears throat> we have always, as you know, kind of a new development and new technology. I think crypto has a uh, you know, role to play in the future, but it's still in its infancy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the problem is suffering for the moment also is, uh, Obviously, there's no consistent, you know, view of regulation. So you have countries who can welcome crypto and have uh, accepted it. Some which are making it illegal, and some countries which are, you know, developing regula regulation. So it's a bit of a difficult, uh, especially if you deal uh, on a global basis like we do, to deal with that type of, uh, of, of uh, you know, kind of new product. So I think it, yeah, it needs to be developed again yeah, because it's, it's, it's still, as I said, it's still in its infancy. But there's no doubt that uh, you know uh, things will change in the future. What I'm uh, particularly more interested, I think, is the technology which supports crypto, which is blockchain, which you have to separate. Blockchain is a uh, is you know distributed ledger uh, kind of uh, technology has got a lot of. Uh, application, mm -hmm. uh, possible application, which are actually very useful, like, you know, kind of ID verification. You can use it for a number of things, and we are already seeing some development, and I think that technology is really, really interesting, to mm -hmm. be, for me, to be frank. Yeah, I think blockchain. blockchain is a lot more interesting mm -hmm. than crypto at this stage. You have blockchain, quite broader, <laughs> a yeah. broader topic that we yeah. won't exhaust yeah. when yeah. start talking about, yeah. but at least mm. it has more offers. Yeah. Uh, you, talk, you mentioned something to do with regulators there, yeah. uh, and uh, your customers are, of course, world over, as they transact every single time, um, in the different countries, about 140 of them. Uh, they have different regulators. Yeah. Does that affect you? Yes, and, and that's why, you know, potentially the cost of remittance is high, because a company like us, have to be regulated, which I agree totally with saying, you know, regulation is important to protect the customers. Mm -hmm. But the inconsistency of regulation across the world can be challenging, especially mm -hmm. for new technology company, because the, the, the problem is a lot of regulators are still, you know, and the laws and the regulation are still, you know, based on before the new technology, uh, you know, uh, arose. Mm -hmm. So they have not adopted or adapted to those new regulations. So sometimes they will not accept for us to do things in certain country uh, because they're not, you know, they have not adapted the, the legislation to the new technology. An example, for example, is uh, when uh, in Malaysia, for example, they didn't accept online KYC, you know your customer online, where you upload your ID. Mm -hmm. So we could not operate in Malaysia. So what uh, happened is uh, the regulator has set up what they call a sandbox, a regulatory sandbox, mm -hmm. which is a way to, you know, test a new product in a controlled environment mm -hmm. and therefore for the regulator to learn about that new technology and develop new policies and regulation, and that's what happened in, uh, in Malaysia. And now Malaysia allows EKYC, which they didn't before. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why, you know, when I talk to regulators across the world, I, I encourage them to, to adopt this regulatory sandbox uh, uh, program because it's really helpful and it will help both 
you know, the, the government, the regulator, but also all these you know, young entrepreneurs who want to set up this business mm -hmm. and who want to test those new products. And obviously, you know, if you are going to get licensed, it's very expensive, but if you can test it in a safe environment, mm -hmm. it will make it much easier and it will benefit everybody. Okay. At the end of the day, everyone, we tap into the share. Well, good to know you're still a part of today's episode of Business Today. My name is Sandra and I'm having a great time with Catherine right here. But for now, let's have uh, Sounds of Business and then shortly we'll return with Catherine having more for you. Stay with us. Shabe Vinantias, Sergeant Ranger Guide, Queen Elizabeth National Park, Station D. Shasha. And uh, we are here having a look at uh, Applied Reliance. And uh, this is the common, or the commonest ride scene, which comprises of three, four adults, three females, and one sub-adult male, plus four cubs. Uh, here, now though the group is missing one female, maybe on the ground or up in the tree, somewhere else, and uh, they are up in the trees because, as I said, we call them tree climbing lions. The reason is that they climb up in the trees, which is not common in other lions. And uh, they are nowhere different, the same species of lions we have on the planet Earth. But these ones, they climb, they have that tactic and ability of climbing up in the trees. Because we feel it's because our soil here is glacial. So after rain, it holds a lot of water. So which forces them to leave that muddy, watery place to make themselves clean and smart and then they go and rest up in the trees. That's why they commonly up in trees most of the time. Watching and staying business today happening on UBC here to inspire you and uh, still with Catherine uh, getting to know lots uh, to share and I uh, hope you enjoy the sounds of business I will usually bring you that particular feature uh, for you to get to know where to invest and uh, maybe if you want to around the nation also a way of uh, promoting domestic tourism um, Catherine good to have you again and now uh, just on to still a topic of discussion uh, for the young investors who want to tap into this what advice would you give them? I think, um, you know, obviously, if you if you are an investor, you know, and there's also also very top from the very small to uh, you know VC funds, you know, it's obviously identifying maybe an area which you are particularly interested, mm -hmm. um, and uh, which you potentially have a bit of knowledge because then you can assess the risk. You know, uh, at the end of the day, if you're an investment, you need to decide mm -hmm. uh, how much you know what's the risk you are prepared to take, mm -hmm. uh, and if you want uh, to. Uh, you know, especially with new business, there's always a risk that the business will fail and therefore you will lose your money. So I think assessing uh, the risk is, and deciding what you want to do is very important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a, um, I, I talk to, to, to people who are now setting up what they call angel club, angel business club, mm -hmm. which is, you know, so they get together and uh, look at business together so they can make a better assessment of uh, uh, the, the business and decide whether to invest in it as a group rather than as an individual. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly things that could be done in, in Uganda, for example, where you know, people who have a, a bit of money could uh, you know, uh, get together and help those young entrepreneurs who need uh, you know, finance. Because finance for any new business is always a problem. Because the banks are generally not prepared to take that much risk mm -hmm. and therefore they need to identify other types of investors. 
jobs. That, that Okay, maybe what would you want to see change? Change. Uh, for us to have a better platform to do business, especially well, for the young entrepreneurs. Yes, I think, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's make it easier to, to support. The, the regulation, I said that the sandbox, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. uh, is very important. It's, it's for the, you know, the, the regulators to uh, to understand, uh, you know, the, the technology and therefore help those uh, new businesses. Banks in some countries are getting there by setting up some hub as well to help and for them to understand new technology because, you know, the banks have a big problem. They have a legacy system and for them changing is quite difficult. So they, they, they are starting, you know, understanding they need to learn from those young businesses mm -hmm. uh, how they can change their, their processes and, and meet the, co the, the consumer needs because that's all it's what it's about. It's about understanding the consumer needs and therefore you know, building your business around that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Away from work, <laughs> before we let you go, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what interests you or what takes up your time? Well, uh, I'm this Don't tell me you're into reading books and looking at yeah, figures, yeah, yeah, no, transactions. No, no. I'm, uh, I'm very much... I'm very passionate about what I do, and uh, you know I'm very interested in the tech scene. And uh, in London, obviously, as you know, uh, London is a very much a, a big tech hub, and uh, so I get involved with a lot of uh, small hubs. I do a lot of mentoring because, for me, especially as a woman, you know, I think it's important to to, to support women, you know, reaching their 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 goals. And uh, I think mentoring is very important, so I do a lot of mentoring. Um, and uh, so I keep very busy that way. <laughs> and what have you admired about the fall of Africa, Uganda? The, pardon? The, what, is, what have you admired, what has taken your attention? Oh, uh, Uganda, I think it's uh, the gentleness of people, like, oh, that I really like. Uh, and uh, as I said, you know, uh, it's very close to, to our heart at, uh, at World Remy because it was one of our first countries uh, when we started. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we've... Uh, We've, uh, we've been, always been very close to Uganda, so as I said, yesterday I, I went and met some of the, the early people who started working with us, so that mm -hmm. was really great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, so I should say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uganda is close to you. Yeah. Uh, maybe a, a message that you would want to share with the Ugandans before, well, that you, a message that you, uh, from your heart. Well, as I said, you know, I think Uganda has, has a great potential, and uh, you know, what I like is, you know, there's so many young people here, uh, and that applies to a lot of Africa, but uh, especially in Uganda, and there's so much potential. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for you know, everybody to really support that potential. To, 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 because you know, all these young people have got such great ideas and they need support. Mm -hmm. uh, so please you know, look at that and mm -hmm. uh, support all your young people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of potential. Yeah. <laughs> When I see women are so passionate about business and everything, and also supporting other uh, young women out there, it uh, it it takes me away. It it, it kind of uh, motivates me as well. And uh, I look at Catherine and I'm wishing I'm like, uh, if you happen to be the next president, <laughs> what you want to see change? That is oh. what I'm looking at. Oh, you've never thought about. <laughs> no, politics is not for me. Uh, I can't much prefer doing things and uh, getting things done. So mm -hmm. I don't think I would ever go in po into politics. But for me, it's uh, I, you know, I can talk to the politicians and tell them what they need. And that's what you know, as a, as a company, we we want to to give the message. You, we we see things, you know, as it happens. So for us, it's you know, we can say, well, you know, these are the problems. These are the type of things that you can work on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Way forward for World Remit? Well, bigger things. Uh, bigger things, yes. Certainly, you know, um, we, we want to grow, continue to grow in our markets, but also look at the product, how we can refine the product and uh, make it better. And certainly in Africa, for us, as I said, is, you know, it's an important continent for us. We, we 50% of our volumes go to Africa. Mm -hmm. So it's looking at what else we can do and we allow in our next stage of development is looking at sending from Africa. For the moment, Africa is very much a receive mm -hmm. uh, you know, comp, uh, network. Now we want to be able to allow people to send as well. So you'll see new things happening in the... In a Definitely had a wonderful time, a great time right here, sharing with, um, sharing with Catherine. Uh, Catherine Wines of uh, all the way from UK sharing with us a lot to do uh, with World Remit and uh, how Uganda can tap into there and also advice for the young investors, for the young entrepreneurs out there. I believe at least you picked one or two things along the way. Here always to inspire every single weekday, Monday to Friday, business uh, today. 
more updates still coming your way. Keep watching. Thank you so much, Kathy, for your time. Thank Wish you very you much. Best. All well our love. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to your people at home. Thank you. Thank you very much.